Well, let's talk about Unwrapped. Okay. How did that come about? Um, doing It's a Surprise and it didn't do well, and they had done three or four specials on a Food Network of Unwrapped, and uh, another guy was hosting it, and they were thinking about, at the time, Biography was the big show in the movie. Right. And they said, take a look at the show, we're thinking about putting it on Food Network. And I looked at it and I said, what biography is for a &E is what Food Network can do with Unwrapped. And sure enough, when we first put it on, it was on 10.30 on Monday nights, crashed and burned, died. And then they moved it to Monday nights at 9 o'clock and it exploded. And they said to me, we're going to move it to Mondays at 9 for six weeks. If it does well, great. If not, hasta la vista. And it became such a hit, you know, uh, we've been on from 9 to 10. They just moved us, I think we're on from 8 to 9 now. But we've been on for 10 years. And they use us as filler programming now. Yeah, yeah they, we put us on, they run us all Saturday nights, so or they run us on holidays. And we've become sort of what Wheel of Fortune and Jeopardy is to syndication. We've become to the Food Network, which is, you know, oh, it's unwrapped. Uh, people just love machinery and behind the scenes. And uh, people call it the candy show. We only do about 20% candy, but those are the episodes that people seem to remember and love. So What's your favorite episode? You know, we've done, I think, 325 half hours and 41 hour specials. Um, I don't have a favorite. It's, they're all just fun to do. and. I love when people come up to me from age 8 to 80 and tell me they watch it and love it. So, you know, I've been lucky to do TV that moms and dads and kids can sit and watch. Just about every show I've ever done has been that. So, you know, I'm, I'm a dinosaur. I'm the last of a breed who has done family broadcasting and, and sort of gotten away with it. But know? are you a foodie? Oh, you know what? Um, I've always loved food. I, you know, they, they almost look at that word as a negative at Food Network. They don't really want to appeal to just foodies. They want to appeal to the masses. So, do I love food? Yes. Have I learned a lot about food? Yes. Uh, Michael Simon's a, a dear friend. Bobby Flay's a good friend. These guys cook for me. I just have a weird um, palate. I don't like... <laughs> I don't like a lot of stuff. I don't eat anything from pig. I don't like, you know, strange parts of... You know, I don't eat, you know, uh, animal intestines and eyeballs and ears. These guys, as a chef, love that stuff. But... I, you know, Jose Garces, who's one of the Iron Chefs, has a restaurant near our place in Philadelphia. Tapas, most amazing food. Michael Simon, incredible food. Mario Batali, amazing food. Bobby Flay, his Southwest stuff. He does a, a, a duck quesadilla you can dive in and swim around in. So I've been fortunate to be around some of the best chefs in the world, and my palate has grown. And um, I guess I've become a bit of a foodie. I certainly have been educated by some of the best chefs in the world. You know? What's next for you? Uh, I have a doctor's appointment um, <laughs> well, at 2 o'clock, doing a physical if you'd like to come. Yeah. Um, you know what, we just sold a bunch of new shows to, to Food Network, we actually just uh, sold a pilot to Nickelodeon. Um, I'm just having fun. I still would always rather host than produce, although I'm producing more than I'm hosting. And I just want to stay in the business and keep working. I don't ever want to retire because I don't know what I do, I don't have hobbies. Um, I like traveling. Uh, we just went to uh, Italy, France, and Spain, spent three weeks, spectacular. So I'd like to do more of that, but, um, you know, if I did another 10 years of, you know, Food Network or whatever, that would be fantastic. Finally, if you could say one thing to all of uh, the generation that grew up with you through Double Dare and what would you do and all that, any, would you like to say anything to them? Thank you. Uh, for remembering and thank you for, I mean, it was obviously an, an important part in, in your guys' lives. Oh, it was huge. I mean, I, I honestly can't believe that I'm sitting here next to you. <laughs> See, that's that was I mean, it's weird. I'm almost 30 talking like that, but I turned my house into the obstacle course. I've you know? heard this from so yeah. many people. I wanted to be you. Oh, well, that's kind. I, it, you know, it's... And get slimed at the same time. <laughs> yeah. I, I, um, it, look, it was right place, right time. I didn't plan it. It was what it was. We, I always looked at it as an adult show. I wanted to host adult television, but I was there with kids. And I, I think the success of the show was I didn't treat kids with a whiny little voice and go, you know, do you have a girlfriend, Bobby? To me, I was doing Jeopardy, and I was treating the kids like adults. And I did jokes for the parents and screwed around. I think if you went back and looked at those shows now, you'd see a whole different side because we were always screwing around. Um, and it was just fun. And I think the kids, I have people like yourself come up to me and say, I want to be. I want to be in broadcasting because you guys look like you enjoyed yourself so much. And we were. We were laughing all the time. And every night we go out to dinner and say, "Could you believe we did this?" One day, um, a girl slipped on. We had a ton of slime there, and she 
fell. And I said, looked at the camera and said, whoa, she got, she got slime with the yin-yang. And everybody <laughs> went, like a collective gas, okay? And the, and the producers, and I said, are we still on the air kind of situation? And I, I have to realize you're talking to, you know, 8, 9, 10, 11 year old kids. And I kind of realized what I said after the fact. So we went to, I said, you know, back more after this, we went to commercial. I said, the producers, would you want to go back and reshoot the end of the And went, and we went, no. And they said, we want you to come back. So they came back and they made, they took the yin and the yang sign and they had me come up and explain the difference between yin and yang. But the fact that we kept it on, you know? <laughs> and so we always did that. I think it was early cable years, 1986 to 94. We got away with stuff. If you went back and looked at that stuff now, we were really on the borderline of being semi-risque to that audience. But the parents loved it. And for whatever reason, it worked. And I'm just thankful. And you know, when people come up to me and have memories, I go, wow, it had that much of an impact on me? Huge. You? What was it? You know, it was every day, all my friends and I would get together and we would sit down and watch it and see who could answer the question. And, you know, destroying the house, taking a mattress and sliding down the staircase. Like, we did everything. <laughs> did we, you really? Yeah, we wanted, we wanted to be on Double Dare. Now, I grew up in Hawaii, so I was so far away from everything. Yeah. So we had to make do. And That's funny. Uh, you, you shaped a lot of lives, so thank you. My pleasure. It was a lot of fun, and, uh, you know, um, I wish I had something to do with it. I mean, I, I talked to you before we started this thing that um, I was 34 years old when I got the opportunity. If I would have had the opportunity when I was in my 20s, I wasn't good enough. So uh, it's all timing and, and getting the right opportunity and walking in and being able to accomplish the task and get the confidence. You know, now I have the confidence to do anything. But when you're that young, you, start, you don't know. So... Um, Nickelodeon was new, I was new, and it just worked. If they want more information about you, is there uh, somewhere that they can go to I, I have, you know, or I, a Twitter or a Facebook? Or... <laughs> I'm so old school. Um, <laughs> go to the Food Network. Go to the Food Network, <laughs> contact them, and, and they'll get in touch with you. I don't Twitter, and uh, there, I, there's a Facebook page. I have my own, and then there's one that somebody started, so you go to Facebook, I guess. But uh, I, I appreciate all the people who go to that site and say nice things, and I do look at it, so... Appreciate it. Well, Mark Summers, thank you. Thank you so much for being on withjosh.com. Thank you, Josh. I really appreciate well it. Well done. Oh, thank you.